Now then we go to another topic. Uh, we want to study the noise of a transistor. So for a transistor, we should say that it is just a transfer resistor, right? So it's a resistor by itself, although its resistance is controlled by the gate. So it must also have white noise. And what is the uh, equation for it? It is because it is in saturation and it is not a regular transistor resistor, right? Uh, it is 4 kT gamma GM, right? Let's agree this is correct, okay? So it's saying that the noise current from source to drain is 4 kT gamma GM with the 4 kT gamma GM power spectral density, okay? So your current might be fluctuating from 0 to 1 throughout the time. If you take the square, then the power spectral density or the FH power of this one is 4 kT gamma GM. Now, if you plot on the frequency domain, I n square bar equal to 4 kT uh, gamma GM. Okay. So, what is gamma? Gamma is just a constant. Uh, you need to check the literature or do new calibration for new technology if you want to build a PDK. Uh, for long channel, usually it's 2 divided by 3, right? For short channel, it is about 2, which is larger, right? So you can model this and then use it in your circuit simulation calculation uh, to understand how much uh, noise is due to this transistor thermal noise. Now, at the same time, we know that transistor is a transfer resistor. We know that the ID is proportional to Vg by Gm. That is the transconductance, right? Uh, so we can say Id equal to Gm times Vg. So Id square equal to Gm square times Vg square. This is just help us to have some mental exercise. Then if it is a noise, is mean square, mean square, right? You do the square of all this stuff and then take the mean. Uh, Although this is a frequency domain, not exactly the mean square like what I said earlier, right? But it will still obey the relationship that it is equal to the GM square of this guy. So as a result, instead of modeling it as a current noise from strain to source, I can model it as a voltage noise at the gate such that this VNG square mean bar equals to this whole term, which is I N D square bar divided by G M square. So we get 4 kT gamma G M. Okay, so the take home message here is this. Uh, the transistor has the first component of noise from the drain to source. You can model it as a current noise. This is thermal noise. You can model it as a current noise of 4 kT gamma G M or it is equivalent to a voltage noise as the gate 4 kT gamma divided by G M. Second thing, I really hope you can memorize the relationship between ID and VG in small signal. Okay, they are related by the transconductance. The second noise in a transistor is the gate resistance thermal noise. What does it mean? Now, if you remember your layout here, right, you did in your assignment, you lay out this active and then you draw the poly or gate. Then you separate it to two parts, drain and source. The length is the width of your gate. This is the length because the current is flowing from drain to source under this gate, right? And the width of the transistor is in this direction. So from here, you see that I can also treat this as many transistors in parallel. Maybe this transistor with width W1, this transistor with width W2, right? They're in parallel because the current are flowing from top to bottom, parallelly, and they are connected on top becomes the drain, or be connected at the bottom becomes the source. So I can model it as something like this, right? One transistor W1 divided by L, W2 divided by L, Wn divided by L. But we want to recognize that the gate has finite resistance. So from left to right, you go through some resistance, in order when you reach this first transistor, first subpart of the transistor. 
You go for more resistance when you reach the second support, and even more when you reach the last part, right? So this is what we are modeling here. We may have RG1, which is just the total RG. This is the RG, the green one. I measure from here to here. I put a voltmeter here and measure the current. Then I get the RG. This is the total resistance along this line. But however, for each transistor, they don't see the whole resistance because the signal comes here. You only go through RG when you reach the first transistor. RG divided by N when you reach the first transistor. Then you go for 2 RG divided by N when you reach the second transistor. And you go for N RG divided by N, which is RG, when you reach the last transistor. Right? So talking so much, all I want to say is that the gate has resistance. Then of course you have thermal noise. It must be 4 KT RG. But because not each part of the same transistor receiving the same noise in this configuration, effectively, the whole transistor actually only see RG divided by 2, right? We did not derive it. You can refer to paper, see how people derive it. But the main point is that it is not RG as an effective gate resistance. It's RG divided by 3. So the thermal noise is 4KT RG divided by 3. And that's it. That's what I want to say. I could have just told you that the gate resistant thermal noise has a voltage spectral density power spectral density of 4KT RG divided by 3. And that is all you need to know, right? But I will try to use this layout to explain a little bit more, okay? Now, for a good transistor, for well-designed transistor, usually this term, which is the thermal noise coming from the gate resistance, is much smaller than the thermal noise due to the channel, okay? So usually we will ignore it. But bear in mind, you do have this term. It might come up sometime, right? So otherwise, we will only pay attention to 4KT gamma divided by GM, which is this one due to the thermal noise. The last noise that we want to discuss for the device is the thicker noise. So what is that? First, I give you the uh, equation, and this is also called the 1 over F noise. The power spectral density, we can model it as a voltage noise source at the gate, is K divided by WLC OSD times 1 over F. You see that if I have larger W and L, I have smaller noise. So why is that? So let's understand what is the physical nature. So here shows the cross-section of a transistor. The left is, let's say, source. The right is drain. So the electron move from the source to drain. Now, the electron will just move slowly from left to right and continuously like an army that marching in front of a building from left to right, right? So when they leave, they reach the drain, you count how many of them reach in every second, then you will say that is the current, right? A current is number of charge pass through that region per unit second. That is the current. Larger current, more charge passing through at the same time, right? Now imagine that building actually ha has a door and someone would just put, uh, uh, pull out the hand and grab a soldier into the building and close the door. Then what happened? Then this is like the trap. You trap the electron. So you have less electron passing through the drain at a certain time because it just gets trapped here. Okay. But however, you may also randomly open the door and push the soldier back so you join the army and pass through the marching band and pass through again. And then at that time, you might actually have a larger current. And that is the source of the noise. The trap is due to the imperfection uh, in the offside and also between the interface of the offside and the substrate. So if you have a better technology, you have less trap, then you have less chance to trap and detrap electrons. If you don't trap and detrap electrons, then it means your current will be very smooth, so you have less noise. Now then why larger width and L is better? Because this is a random process. If I have a larger area, actually I have many places that might have the trap. And maybe one of the trap is trapping electron, but at the same time, another trap is releasing electron. So overall, you don't feel there is a change in the population. That's why if it's larger, you have a smaller thicker noise. Okay. 
It also have a 1 over F frequency. If we plot the power spectral density, right, and I plot the loss scale of the voltage power, you see that it go down linearly, right, because it's log as a function of frequency. That is easy to understand because trapping an electron is not a very fast process. For low frequency, you can do it much easier, right? Grab someone in and let, and up, let it out. But if you want to trap an electron in terahertz, it's very difficult, right? So that's why uh, you have this relationship. If you plot in the linear scale, you have this exponentially decaying uh, graph which means that the power spectral density is very high at low frequency and very small at high frequency. Okay, So we can model this as a voltage uh, noise source uh, using this equation. But again, we can transform it to the current noise source, right? Remember? Right here. We remind ourselves ID equal to GM times VG. So we just multiply the whole thing by GM squared. Because again, this is power is the square of the signal, right? So it, is, it becomes this term. So that is the frequent noise. So we have three kinds of noise. Thermal noise at the channel. Thermal noise due to the gate resistance. Frequent noise. We need to study them all together, right? They will combine together. Again, we ignore the thermal noise due to the uh, gate resistance because usually it's small. Then mostly we have two noise or you can also combine them. But anyway, we have a frequent noise and a thermal noise. Frequent noise is very high at low frequency. So you keep going down. But thermal noise is straight, right? It's flat, right? Because it's a white noise. So when you add them together, you get a curve like this. This is the total noise you get from a transistor. And particularly, we have a corner that is what we call the corner frequency. What does it mean? It is at which the frequent noise becomes the same as the thermal noise or comparable. On the right left of it, it's mostly frequent noise. On the right of it, it is mostly thermal noise, right? So in order to find this frequency, we will just say, okay, it must be the point the frequent noise, power spectral density equals to the thermal noise power spectral density. Plug in the equation, we already know how to do it. K divided by WLC OS, and I forgot to say that K is a constant, depends on technology, and also smaller in PMOS. We plug in, and then plug in, and then just I want to find the F corner. F corner is at which these two terms are the same. Right, there I get this. Usually it's 100 megahertz. Right? Try to pause the video and try to go through the math yourself. And again, how can I change the corner frequency? If I want to e reduce the corner frequency, I just increase the thermal noise. <clears throat> or I mean the temperature. Makes sense? Because larger temperature, larger thermal noise, then this is the uh, flat, flat region, right? Plateau. Then you will move to this point. Okay? Okay, the last thing I will talk about... Uh,